Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make some really fun backgrounds and some cool cards. And what I really wanna teach today is how to use uh, some different supplies together to create new and unique things. But I wanna show you this in a way where you don't feel like you have to have every color in a collection in order to do something cool. Because sometimes you wanna buy like one or two colors of something before you decide if you wanna go whole hog and get a collection. This video is brought to you by Rubber Stamp Tapestry. They have an amazing selection of peg stamps and some cool unmounted stamps as well as inks and other stamping accessories and I have a coupon code in the video description for you so you can save 10% on your entire order so make sure you check that out before you shop so you can get a good deal get a better deal than you normally get so that's always fun so uh, when you're making backgrounds especially messy inky ones you want to not be afraid Okay, so what I recommend doing is just finding some inexpensive cardstock, like the stuff from the um, office supply store, and just chopping it down into quarter size sheets. So these will be perfect for a standard A2 size card. So I just cut a regular piece of um, cardstock in quarters. This doesn't have to be the super heavy duty stuff. This can be cover weight, just a little thicker. You know, so you just want it thicker than like your regular. Um, text weight paper. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to use a product that I bought about a year and a half ago but have never opened and those are these um, jelly uh, plate jelly arts uh, little minis these little stamps and look at that I haven't opened any of these packages I bought these in Denver flew home with them and still never use those so I'm gonna use the round one but if you don't have this you can use um, like a clear round acrylic block that you would stamp with or a shadow stamp or Oh, I don't know, a plastic bag. It, it doesn't matter. Just something that you can put ink on and then you can swish it onto your paper. So we're going to use some Distress Oxides or regular Distress Inks I think would also work really nice, be pretty for this too. And um, what I'm going to do is ink up a few colors on this. I'm going to start with the blue in the center and then I'm going to do, I think I'll do some green on either side here. So I have uh, peacock feathers and peeled paint. Rubber Stamp Tapestry does have the whole selection of the Distress Oxide, so, um, and you can use that 10% off coupon on that, so it's a really good deal. So now I'm just spritzing some water on here, so it makes the ink beat up and it'll give me a cool effect. And I'm gonna stamp this a couple times on my paper, and then just it's just gonna give it, you know, just kind of some interesting, interesting effects. I'm gonna set this aside and I am going to do something different on the next piece of paper. I think I want um, kind of a more all over, um, all over color on this. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of direct to paper. That's when you just kind of smush your ink pads around. I'm gonna use those same two colors and I think I'll add in the uh, Salty Ocean. Now these um, Distress Oxides are a little bit kind of oily and they really are wonderful for any sort of technique where you want to like ink a background, you know, really put down a lot of color. It sits on top of the paper and that's what makes it kind of, um, I think a little more vivid. So I'm just kind of working these around a little bit. You can go in with a little bit more if you want. And I'm actually working on a sketchbook. I usually work on newsprint, but my other paper was so pretty when I was done making backgrounds earlier today that I'm like, oh, well, I don't want to waste all that. I want to maybe use it for wrapping paper or something. So I'm working on a nicer, with a nicer piece of drawing paper underneath just so I can perhaps save that if it comes out nice, but not so expensive that I'm worried. I mean, it's still a cheap piece of drawing paper. It's nothing too, um, too precious. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dry it really quick and now I'm going to spritz it with some water. And then you can see that now this is really, um, if you're using Distress Oxide inks, you're gonna get this very unique uh, texture when you do this. If you're using um, regular Distress inks, you're also gonna get a cool effect doing this. If you're using um, other inks, you may or may not get an interesting effect with this, so it's completely up to you uh, whether you wanna do that step or not. So there we just have this really uh, kind of interesting speckly texture here and this will work different on different things like heavier heavier sized paper will give you more of an effect and more absorbent paper really won't give you much of an effect so it just depends on what you're using so now what i want to do is grab a stencil and you can use whatever stencil you have or you want and i'm going to use a little bit of gesso which is just it's like a really chalky white acrylic paint and i'm just going to squirt some of this out on my craft mat right over here just a little drop you don't need too much and then I'm just using a cosmetic sponge. These are the kinds that you'd like, you know, put makeup on uh, with. And I really like these for applying gesso because um, I can usually get a few uses out of it. Um, I can always cut, like if I do it like this, I can cut the end off and use another piece. That was a tip I learned from Carolyn Doobie 
on a couple colorful journey. She has a great little uh, website and YouTube channel. And anyway, I can use this a couple times and then when it's all used up, I can toss it out and um, it's not as wasteful as like a sponge brush. Or you can rinse it out and keep using it. These are what I make my homemade daubers with. All right, so let's see what we have here. Now we have this really fun layered uh, background design. Look how easy that is. that is, it's fun. Only takes two supplies, your ink and a stencil with some gesso. You know, really have fun with that. It's a really fun technique. Um, another thing I wanna do after your first layer on This Is Dry, you can bring in some other colors with your daubers. So this is kind of fun if you're, sometimes you'll work on something and you're just not sure what you wanna do. That's why I recommend you cut up a few pieces of paper so that you can make backgrounds and you can kind of set them aside and look at them and think about them and then you know but you're always working on something so it doesn't feel like you're um, you know you're wasting time waiting for things to dry I like to take colors to if I want something to be nice and vibrant what I'll do is I'll take a color that is um, oh I got some brush on there I'll take a color that is kind of um, opposite so the opposite of my blue here would be orange so I'm using the spice marmalade and I'm just gonna very sloppily drag some in. You can be much more, um, you know, deliberate. You can use, you know, fancier tools if you want to. I just want to get some color in here because I know it's really not going to matter, like how carefully it's applied for the look that I'm going for. I'm going to grab some of this, some of this red here. And the red is kind of the opposite of, um, of the kind of tealy green color. This is the abandoned coral. Such a pretty color. I'm just going to add some of that in there. So now that I've got these colors down, I know that this ink is reactive. And also I know that that's reactive too when I've let that dry. So what I can do is go on over with this and give it a little opportunity to, to react. Since I already had water on my jelly plate when I smooshed it down, I'm not going to get as much of a dramatic effect from that as I am from this. So if you're, you know, doing the, the techniques and then you're spritzing it and you're like, oh, I'm not really getting that effect. It could be A, your paper's too absorbent, but it could be that you've already kind of diluted that with water and um, the effect is going to be minimized. So if I blot this now, here you can see on this place where I just put the, the ink with a dauber right onto the paper with no water, where I sprayed the water, you really see the effect. And then here, I'm well actually there, it's not too bad either. You can still see it pretty well there. But sometimes once you've already added the water, like over here where I had more water um, and less pigment, there's, there's less of an effect. So just kind of keep that in mind. But the thing is, you're not gonna really know until you experiment. So you really just wanna have fun and, uh, and experiment. Now the last little background technique I wanna show you is using a product called uh, Color Burst. You can also use brush out or nuance powders or any sort of powder pigment that you have um, for paper crafting. And I like this because two colors. When you are deciding whether a new product is for you, don't go and buy the whole line. Don't buy a package of six of them. If you're not sure if you're going to like it, buy one or two and then use it with the supplies you already have. Then you're going to make a much smarter decision whether that product is for you or if it's not, because there can be a beautiful, wonderful product out there. It might not be for you. Just like there can be a beautiful dress in the store, but it just might not suit you. It's the same thing with your craft supplies. Just because somebody else likes it just because I like it doesn't mean you're gonna like it so keep that in mind now my stencil wasn't very clean so I've got some other things going on there but that's not bothering me now what I'm gonna do here it, and the key is you want to just have a very light amount and they say don't squeeze these but I have to say I find that if I if I just puff it like that I get the like a really nice fine application make sure your ink pads are closed nearby when you're doing this or you might um, puff some of this onto your ink pad. I don't think that's what I did here. I think I actually was like inking a page that had some brush oil on it and that's how I got it onto my um, onto my ink pad there. It's not enough to make a problem. I don't even know if you can see it on camera, but that, that reminded me to mention close your ink pads up <laughs> or you could end up with a nasty surprise because that would ruin an ink pad. So what I do is I actually tap it to make sure all that powder is at the bottom of my little eyedropper thing here and then I will hold it at an angle whoa and a lot came out that time and I'll just squeeze it so usually I just get a puff of uh, a puff of air and color but that time I did get a lot more pigment than I intended to so I'm just gonna try to uh, try to move it out that way try to get that pigment down to the bottom it's a new pretty new uh, container too so 
See, it will give you just a little puff, and that's what you want. Generally, they say just shake it, um, but then I get big clumps and not necessarily the look that I want. So um, let's dry this really quick. Now I'm just going to spritz on water so any of the leftover pigment can be activated, and then I'm just going to let it kind of drip around. And that's going to give me another interesting background. So let's see what we have right now, just one layer. Okay. So we've got three really beautiful, fun, interesting backgrounds, right? These would be beautiful for any summary card. They're very citrusy. But the thing I want to teach you guys is take the project and make it your own. You're going to get more out of this tutorial if you go with the colors that you like and you go with the themes that you like. You will get out of it what you want. Um, I know sometimes people will leave comments and they'll be like, well, I don't like that color you use. That'd be pretty if you didn't use that color. Boy, you made a bad judgment there with that color. So when you do it, don't use that color. You know, I use the color I wanted to use. I use the color that I liked. So make it your own. It, you will get out of these lessons, what you put into them. So if you go grab your materials and you try it, you are going to learn. You are going to come with some really fun stuff and you're going to make it your own. You're going to make it suit your needs. You're going to make it suit your style and your personality. So you do you, I'll do me. How about that? <laughs> okay. I hope that didn't come off as snarky. So now what I want to do is dry these backgrounds because then we can go on with some more layers. The cool thing about working on like scrap paper is that you can test out an idea before you do it on your background. I'm really in love with the way these two backgrounds look on their own. So I really don't want to put another layer on them at this point. But this one I thought was a little plain. So I thought hmm, maybe if I went over with some Sensei Distress Oxide's a little more opaque, maybe I went, if I went on top uh, using the jelly plate, the mini jelly plate and the Spice Marmalade and Abandoned Coral, I'd have a really cool look. So I just kind of did that on top of this area where I had some of that brush out and I didn't like the look of it. I thought, oh, that looks a little muddy. So because I know that's the outcome that I will get if I do that on top of here, I realize it's not opaque enough to hold its own above this. I decided I'm going to do a different plan. I am going to use my stencil and I am going to go over it with some gesso kind of offset to kind of uh, mellow out some of that really bright green. Now, since my stencil is wet, what I want to do is actually dry it off a little bit because if I don't, I am going to end up um, smearing that brush, the brush show, and I'll probably have the gesso leaking underneath. So I'm drying off the back side. Front side's not too important because I'm going to be using um, that old makeup sponge, so it's not really going to hurt anything, but you definitely want to have that, um, the back side of your stencil dry or stuff is going to seep. So what I want to do is just kind of figure out where my dots are, which kind of got lost a little bit when we um, spritzed over with water to activate the remaining gesso, the remaining brush -o rather. So I am just going to just offset that, squirt it a little bit more gesso, and then add that to my, uh, to my design. Gesso is really wonderful because uh, it's a great way, it's almost like an undo button. You can tone down something that's too bright so that you can add more media on top. It gives it a nice toothy um, surface. So if you want to go in with a pencil or a uh, pen and write on top of it, you can. It's just a really wonderful like just matte white paint. But if you had a white acrylic paint, go ahead and use that. I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy a bottle of gesso if you have white paint, you know, just if you're trying to experiment and see if you like it. But if you're, if you, you know, are in the knee, if you, I guess if you think it will add value to your card making, then go ahead and grab it. It's just a basically chalky white paint. If you had white chalk paint, it's almost the same exact thing. So you could use that as well. And if you let it dry, you can go over it again and get a pure white color. But since the brush -o, uh, underneath is reactive with the water, it's going to actually kind of leach some of that color up into the white. But I think it's really, um, it's really nice. And then you can let this dry. You can dry with a hair dryer. I'm going to quickly blast it with a heat tool, but honestly, using a heat tool to dry an acrylic based paint is not a great idea. I uh, just want to put that out there. Um, so yeah, use a hair dryer, just let it dry on its own. And then we'll be back and do a little bit more layering and stamping. Okay, this is dry. Now, remember what I said about uh, how I got a little brush out on my ink pad here because I was, I was, um, 
kind of dabbing and dabbing and I actually got some brush out onto my applicator. Well, to make sure this doesn't happen today, and I am going to tear out this and re-glue another um, makeup sponge in there because I don't want to contaminate my ink pad, I'm actually going to make myself uh, a little palette of ink so I don't have to worry about contaminating my, my ink pad. So to do that, you simply just press your ink pad onto your craft mat or acrylic block, whatever you have. And now I'm going to use my... Um, my sponge just to pick up that color just like I would off of a um, off of an ink pad. It will probably come off a little bit stronger because you've got all that uh, kind of concentrated color there but I figured this would be a nice way to add a little color um, here and there since we do have the white back from the gesso and I thought that would be a great way to just kind of get some of that in there here and there. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit of this coral. So just keep repeating the same colors, which is great if like you have limited colors. If you don't have a ton of, um, of ink pads or, you, you know, maybe you're just trying out the Distress Oxide. So you only have a couple to see if you like them or not. This is a great way to integrate them with the supplies you already have because I have been so guilty of this. I see something new and I have to have it, but not only do I have to have it, I have to have one of every color, you know, and that is, and then if something does not like, I love the Distress Oxides, but like if something doesn't meet your expectations, you've bought so much and then you can feel very bad that you, you know, you bought so much of it, you know, it's like, oh, I thought I was going to like this more, but turns out I don't. And now I have all of this that I have to deal with. So, you know, starting off slow when you're trying a new product, you'll get to really learn what you have and then you can decide whether you want to buy more. Now I'm just picking up any leftover ink because I don't like to waste it. And I'm just kind of letting it drizzle. And this is fun. I really love the look at this. I think it almost looks like sherbet or something like summertime sherbet. And I'm just letting that drip and roam around on its own and there we have another really cute background. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this was, I cut a piece of eight and a half by 11 into quarters. So I had uh, four and a quarter by five and a half inch panels. I also made some card bases that size. So I like to have a little border of my card base color. Uh, so I'm gonna need to trim about a half inch off of two sides here. So once this is all dry, I'm gonna trim them down and then we're gonna come back and do a little stamping. Okay, I have um, trimmed these down. So they're four inches by five and a quarter. So I trimmed a quarter inch off of uh, off of each side, not a half inch. You could do whatever you like, though. And um, that's so that when I use them on a card base, I got my three card bases just kind of nested in each other here. I'll have a nice little border. I really like to have a real poppy edge. And if you don't want to get any more messy, you could always just mat it with black cardstock or just do a really fine line of black around there. But I actually like to build a frame with some black ink. And I'm going to show you how to do it on this one. It's going to be the same for the other two, uh, but this will just give you the idea. Now, when you have stamps, there, there's a lot more ways to use them than what is suggested on the package. So, for instance, this set of window boxes here, I really liked the design of this one, and I thought, you know, that would make a really cool border. So, what I'm going to do here is take this window box stamp and use my Memento ink pad, the tiny one. So, that's another reason why I like these little ones. I mean, it's kind of like if I had to do it over, um, but I've been stamping for a long time, but if I had to do it over, I don't think I would buy full size ink pads. I think I would buy the small ones, and while I'm at it, buy a reinker because a mini ink pad and reinker would cost about the same as a full size pad. And that would be way more ink than in one full size pad, and then it would take up way less space. Um, of course, the downside is if you are doing something really big, you know, it takes longer to ink it up, but not substantially. You know, it's only like if I'm preparing for a class and I definitely use my bigger ink pads, but um, that would be kind of one of those if I had to, you know, older and wiser type things. So using this as a border, I can just kind of stamp it like that and turn it. I can even use a little bit less of the design. Just kind of get that a little bit there. Almost is like a like a wrought iron kind of uh, funky look to it. I just really, I just really liked it. And it's like, oh, I don't really want to put a window box on here, but I love that little bit, that little snippet of design there. 
So look at your stamps. It might be a whole scene of something, but you might just like the edge or you might be able to pull a little bit of pattern here and there. Make sure that, you know, you're looking at your stamps with open eyes. When you're buying a new stamp, think about are there sections of that stamp you could use for something else because it can really make the difference between buying a one trick pony and buying a stamp that you can do many things with. Now these, this is a pretty versatile set here. I'm going to show you really quick. It's called Butterflies and Ivy and all of these little, like, um, these little swags can be used to build frames really easily. So it's a really uh, versatile set. It's just wonderful for a little touch on the edge of a stamped um, kind of motif. Great way to, if you're using masking, it's a great way to build a little bit of frame too around a um, around an area. I highly recommend giving that a try too. And a stamp set like this that has a bunch of different little motifs um, is quite versatile because you can use it with different scale items. So if you're if you're stamping something that's really petite, you have smaller images. If you're stamping something that's bigger, you've got chunkier images. So think about the versatility of a stamp set before you purchase it to make sure it's something you're going to use more than once. And of course, you can use your tried and true peg stamps when you're building your border. Um, this one here is really cute. It's from Dragonfly Dancing. And I can put these little stars here and there. It's very fun and whimsical. I would recommend just kind of turning your stamp as you go so that you don't have them all looking like they're lined up like soldiers. But I think that gives it just a really pretty kind of ethereal look. And this one here is kind of funny. It's from uh, Celery Rose, but it's kind of like a nice flourish. It's, I, what it is is like a vine, but I think it's such a pretty little flourish that you could really throw it pretty much anywhere and make it work. Just be careful. I haven't trimmed this one yet. Anytime you're using the peg stamps, you just want to make sure you don't have ink on that edge or just make sure you don't rock it when you go to, um, when you go to stamp. I try to ink up straight up and down so you don't get the ink on the edge and then just stamp straight down. And then to give the edge a little bit more pop, I'm just gonna go in and ink it like that. And you can get a little smudgier if you want a wider border, or you can just be very dainty and just get a, like a razor sharp border just by going like that. I like a little smudgier, grungier border myself, but like I said, you're gonna get out of any of these tutorials what you put into it. You do it the way you wanna do it. You don't like the color I use? That's fine, you use the color that you like on yours. We're all different, you know, we're all gonna like different things. So that's the same principle for all of the different backgrounds that we have. Now I wanna show you about embellishing your card and what I really thought was kind of fun with this, cause it does kind of have a little bit of a grungy feel would be to use some of these little gears. Now these are, this is a die by Tim Holtz called Gadget Gears. I know a lot of you guys have it. It's a pretty popular die. Um, the thing I like about it is these openings in here and it's very, it's very basic. And I feel like if you're going to invest in a die, dies are kind of expensive, especially the thick ones. If you're going to invest in a die, you want something that is going to, um, it's going to do more than one thing. It's going to, it's going to last you a little bit more. It's not going to be too stylized where it's going to go out of style, you know, in a year. You want to, if you're going to take up space in your craft room, you're going to take out money from your wallet. It should be something that's going to be useful time and time again, especially a tool like a die. So I'm using some metallic thread. I enjoy metallic thread a lot because it's inexpensive. It's lightweight. It doesn't add bulk. And it, I think it really does give you um, a nice, a nice element. Now here it's actually giving us a bit of structure. It's giving us almost like an adhesive property because I'm able to use this to to uh, hold that gear in place. And you can wrap as much of that twine around. You can have it coming out from every little spoke if you want to, like I did in, uh, in this one here. I had it going in from all different angles from each side. Here I had two on there being tied around um, side to side and top to bottom. So you can use as much or as little as you want. Now, I think I'll just leave it like that just to make the um, tutorial a little bit quicker for you. And then what I like to do here is just really simply add a couple things that's going to enhance the scene. So um, this dragonfly is really bold. You could use any sort of stamp that's bold. I thought this was nice because it gives you a little bit of airiness, a little bit of whimsy. It mixes organic elements like um, the flowers with the industrial elements of the wrought iron, like uh, design that we have here in the gear. So I just think it's a nice kind of balanced juxtaposition. Um, so these are <laughs> these are images that you wouldn't necessarily put together, but it's your card and go with your gut and try things out. And you know what? If I didn't like this, guess where it could go? In the trash. Nobody else see it. So uh, there's no there's no reason not to have fun with your creations because 
if you don't like how it turns out, it's only a piece of paper and nobody else has to see it. I like to do things in threes though, so I'm going to put another one down and maybe have that one... Maybe, I just want to have it a slightly different angle as the others. And there we go. So all I have to do here, this is a nice flat card, it would be really easy to mail. Um, what I have to do now is just adhere it onto my card base. So I'm just going to grab, grab one card base here. And now I'm actually going to move this out of the way because I have a feeling that I will get ink on the back of my card if I don't. My card base down, put some generous adhesive on the back. Now when you're doing something with like an inky background, you really want to be generous with the adhesive because um, it's going to warp a little bit. Your cardstock will warp when you're doing this much um, media, when you're using it that wet, it's going to want to warp a little bit. So by putting several strips of adhesive, you're going to really give it a good, uh, a good chance to bond to the card base. And I like to use the recollections cardstock, which is much heavier. It's 110 pounds, but it's much heavier than the 110 pounds stuff I get um, at the office supply store. So you just get a really nice effect. Now, I noticed that my border isn't absolutely perfect. So what I'm going to do is just shift it over. So I have three sides perfect. And then I'm going to trim that fourth side. Whoops. I'm going to trim the other side with my um, paper trimmer. That happens sometimes. My paper trimmer is an old X-Acto, um, not too X-Acto, eh? Um, <laughs> old X-Acto, like guillotine style one. And I do notice it's off by about a sixteenth of an inch. So, you know, sometimes I have to make an adjustment. So I'm not sure if it's the card base or the uh, matting layer that's off, but I'm just going to trim that off on my trimmer and uh, it'll be fine. For this one, I thought it'd be fun, and I did ink the edges first, just because I knew I wanted something kind of thick and grungy. I thought it'd be fun to kind of do a little bit of like a uh, underwater theme here. So I'm just getting a little bit of that kind of like scruffy, uh, I'm thinking of it like seaweed. It's that same, one of those same petite kind of vines. But I just wanted to get, kind of build up some of that texture and turn your stamps around go from different edges really just do whatever you can to get a little bit of a random pattern and then I've got like this uh, grass here a little seaweed I'm gonna throw a little of that in there towards this bottom corner and it's kind of easy when you're doing something like this in silhouette because you don't have to worry about your um, your color choices. Everything's going to be fine because you're using black, you know. I got some ink on the edges. I'm just going to quickly trim that edge so that I don't get any more ink there. Sometimes I do it on the fly. I totally forget at first. And then we'll do a little bit of the baby seahorses. A couple of those. Try to put one on top of that smudge. There we go. Perfect. And um, hmm, let's put an octopus in there. That'll be kind of fun. There. And maybe a little crab. I'm probably going a little crazy with the uh, little embellishments here, but... It's all about having fun. It's, you know, it's, it's art. It's, it's supposed to be enjoyable. It's your, it's your hobby. You know, have fun with it. So now I've got this kind of nautical scene here, which really goes with the steampunk theme in gears. So and another thing is you can always arrange your die cuts to, um, to cover up any mistakes you might've made. This is how my thread comes, by the way. It's really easy to store. Um, I imagine you can find this in any quilt shop like this, but I've been using this for years. It was like 60 cents, <laughs> 59 cents. I've been using this for years, and um, I don't even come close to running out of it because there's a lot in there. And, you know, for card making, you're not going to go through the amount that you would like if you were sewing, I don't think. I really don't know how. It seems like I'm ready. My sewing machine runs out of thread <laughs> pretty quickly, but then I've got spools of metallic stuff I use for card making that last me for years and years. So it's a little tricky when you first go to to put on your um, your embellishment here. I always just look to make sure that I have the rounded over edge up. If it's like a pressure dial like this, just because it. Um, uh, just because it looks a little bit better. And I find that it's a little bit easier to pull out some excess and um, work from that loose end rather than trying to work from it off the, sp off the uh, spool like that because you kind of need to weave it around because you tape down that first edge because it helps you kind of stabilize it. It's a little awkward, but 
you're, you get the hang of it. And of course, I'm just gonna do that four ways, but you can do it as many times as you want. You could add um, little acrylic gems for bubbles. You could do whatever you want on your card. I'm gonna keep mine pretty flat. I like to have, um, you know, batch cards ready to go because, you know, you always need a card, you know, it seems like there's always a birthday or, you know, a thank you that I need a card for. So I'm not going to trust that that's clean. I'm going to move that right out of the way. Another great reason to work on an old sketch pad or something like that, an old magazine. And again, you really want to do it to it with the adhesive. Don't be shy. A money saving tip that I would like to share is that I buy generic refills for my ATG gun. So like usually the gun will come with a couple um, rolls of tape and I'm gonna have to trim a little bit off on that side too. But I buy the, um, I buy the generic ones because it's a lot cheaper and um, I can get them for like about, you know, 225 a roll versus, you know, it's five bucks a roll. So it works for me. So for this one, I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with this. I'll show you what I did with the other one. And um, I can come back to that later, I guess. Or maybe I just will save that for another background for another day. I think that's probably what I'll do since I've already uh, done a bunch of these. But let's take a look at these finished cards. Sometimes you lose steam before you lose <laughs> before you finish your, your cards. Oh, let me trim this one real quick. Okay, we have this one with a little bit of a nautical theme, which I just, I love the layers. I think once you get these layers built up and then you do some stamping on top and then you overlay uh, a die cut and some thread, I think it's just a really fun look. I, I think this one's my favorite out of the whole bunch. I love the whimsical dragonflies um, and the, uh, the border. I just think they look really fun together. Um, this one here was also fun with the double gears and extra thread. Experiment and see what you like best. And this was like the similar to the nautical one except I used dragonflies instead of the uh, the sea creatures. And um, this one was fun but I wish, I kind of messed up here. I wanted the, the little dandelion things floating off and I thought well maybe if I stamp one of these a bunch of times I'll get a really fluffy dandelion and then I put some leaves and I it just didn't work out the way I had imagined and um, I might go over those with a black pen just to kind of thicken them up a little bit but um, but all in all I'm happy with this bet with this batch of cards in fact why don't I grab a pen and go over that and see how that looks because you know what have I got to lose it's only a piece of paper Oh yeah, I like that a little bit better. So if you ever get a situation, I was using the Memento inks for this on um, this one, and I find that sometimes you need a more powerful, more opaque ink like a Archival or um, Versamark or something like that, uh, Versacolor, is, that, is it called Versacolor? I think it's Versacolor, like the Onyx Black, something like that will give you a little bit better. Oh, I just, I should have, I shouldn't try to talk and do this at the same time, but it give you a little bit bolder of a design. Okay, I messed up on that. Don't like pay attention when you're doing it. Don't do like I did. But um, you know, hey, it's only a piece of paper. If you make a mistake, see what else can can happen. I mean, the worst that's gonna happen is you end up throwing it away. A lot of times you'll be able to fix your mistake or at least learn something that you can apply to your next card. So never be afraid to experiment with your supplies. Don't feel like you have to buy a whole collection of something because it's new and you want to try it out. Because I know a lot of times we think, well, you know, it's cheaper if we per per item if we buy the whole thing, so we might as well. But a lot of times that th having so much just makes you intimidated and overwhelmed and it seems like a daunting task. You know, get one tube of something, get one ink pad, see how you like it before investing in the whole line, see how it works with the other things you already have because often that's how you come up with the really cool techniques is mixing and matching different supp supplies from different companies and coming up with some really cool interesting effects. That's why I love to do backgrounds, that's why I recommend buy cheap cardstock, chop it up into quarters and just go to town. Have fun with the stuff you have and if you've come up with some cool combinations of supplies let me know in the comments below so I can give it a try too. Uh, if you're interested in any of the stamps that I use I'm gonna list them all in the video description. I know I showed a bunch of them. I've got like 50 stamps scattered around my work surface right now. It's awful. So I'll list all those in the video description so you can find them. And please do check out our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry, and use the coupon code in the video description to save 10% off your order. So uh, lots of fun stuff going on. I hope you're having a wonderful week. And until next time, happy crafting.